zombies, the bloodthirsty undead. Baseball bats, machetes, hammers, weapons of choice to bring down the walking dead. What makes a zombie go boom? Using scientifically accurate zombie analogs, we put your favorite weapons, objects, and mods to the test, empowering you with the skills and knowledge you need to survive. Learn the best ways to bash on dead skulls and stay alive in any situation. You've studied the books, you've watched the movies, but you've never seen anything like this. Forget everything you know about fighting zombies. Zombie go boom. Kick undead ass. ZGB Top 10. So we got four rounds, pretty much one into the neck. Uh, the neck is completely broken. And if you look at the back, this is the exit wound. It's completely paralyzed, a complete quadriplegic. Not exactly a kill, but let's try a double tap. Number nine. the socket pipe on me? Why? Do you think I'm a liar? A manipulator? Your four and a half pound pipe mod made of an assortment of steel plumbing parts from the hardware store can't stop you from seeing the father. It's impressive, I do agree, and it's 40 and a half inches in length is quite inspiring, as well as its T-fitting hammerhead for a more deadly business end. But why did you use it on the men charged to bring the word of the Father to your heart? We will bring you a new Eden. Be with us. Be with me. I will give you purpose. I will set you free. 
the Far Cry Pipe Mod. It's been our go-to weapon since Far Cry 5, and we have always wanted to see what it would do to an angel in real life. I hope you guys wanted to see it as much as we did, because we are about to take a leap of faith trusting that the guys at Ubisoft do know what the hell they are talking about. But only one way to find out. Zombies, the bloodthirsty undead. When they arrive, will you survive? Zombie go boom. Kick undead ass. Hey, what's up, survivors? Welcome to another mind blowing episode of Zombie Go Boom Video Game Edition. I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Phillips. And today, in honor of Far Cry New Dawn, we're going to be testing out this pipe mod, which has made exactly, or at least as close as we could get, to one of the weapons in Far Cry. But it was really easy, pretty cheap. And what do you think of the weapon? It's got a good weight to it. I think definitely one hit will kill just about anything you swing at it. So, I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing what it does. So, I guess that means that you're ready, right? I'm always ready. <laughs> Let's do this then. Woo! All right, guys. So, we have this beautiful angel right here ready to be annihilated. Charles, what is your plan of attack? Well, I'm going to come in with a power hit and hit the parietal bone right there. Or at least I'm going to try to and see how much damage this freaking thing will do. Oh my goodness. Let's see what we got going on here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. One hit, one kill. My god. That is brutal. I did not expect that to happen, but yeah. Oh my god, you're Look right. Holy crap. Oh my god. So yeah, it cracks. First of all, it hit the parietal bone, annihilated it, cracked, stopped over here, but then it cracked down here all the way to the occipital bone, all the way across, almost to the temporal bone. This is, this is an overkill. Wow. All right, this time I'm gonna come in with another power strike, but this time to the frontal bone. Let's do it. Okay, so we're trying a new rig, so the head's falling off, we'll fix that, you know, but look at that. That's awesome. Look at that, not quite the frontal bone, still hit the parietal bone, but the thickness is right on, exactly what it would be like, and uh, again, overkill. Did you get any blood on you? I mean, I don't feel any blood on me. Okay, so pretty clean weapon. It makes everything go right into the cranial cavity. I just want to go crazy. Sure. that look how beautiful that is yeah perfect cranial cavity that's awesome all right so it flowered up like crazy we're doing a new kind of blood 
which uh, was actually suggested by a fan and we were thinking about doing that but uh, it's uh, cornstarch a lot of people ask us how we make our blood this one in particular is cornstarch black food coloring and water and this much cornstarch makes this what is it it's an amorphous solid right a non-newtonian fluid or whatever yeah. it's called is that right and yeah it's it's really crazy but as you can see this weapon is insanely good i think i saw it rotate a little bit yeah no it did because this thing's round so when you hit it it turns in your hand and so whenever you make contact and you didn't you're not prepared for the turn it'll hit it'll hit the wrong spot and then this whole top will spin yeah you know so so that's one thing you got to get thread tape or something if you're gonna if you're gonna use this thing practically and this crap i don't like this this is stupid it's brittle look i can just rip it with my hand wait, wait don't do it we need it for the tail of the tape okay well we can get more anyway <laughs> yeah no the point is we were trying to make it look like the actual weapon in the game which actually required these twist ties and all this stuff but this is not necessary and it actually makes it worse but other than that, this is a pretty freaking impressive weapon. Look what it did. I mean, come on. And those That's last amazing. hits I was doing, I wasn't even uh, hitting very I could hard. tell. You were just like, nah. Yeah. Nah. Because yeah. this thing's so heavy, uh, you know, you can just basically, if you're doing downward strikes, mostly just let the weight do the work. You just kind of yeah. control it and put a little more force into it. And it actually has a really, really good balance. Yeah. So it feels good. Yeah. Don't even bother with this. I'd put some uh, some sports tape. Yeah, that'd it, be cool. You know, but other than that, I mean, this works almost as great as a warhammer. In fact, if we could find a fitting that actually would have a spike that we could put right there, that would be even deadlier against zombies. So actually, I'm I wouldn't just give it a zombie go boom seal of approval. I, I'm I'm gonna give it the overkill seal of destruction. What do you think? Yeah. I agree. Boom! Number 8 Alright, so not only is this axe ginormous and heavy, but it's also unwieldy. Most of the weight is at the front, so it's going to be really difficult to wield, almost impossible to recover. The best way I can wield this thing is to let gravity do the work, so I'm just going to come down with a vertical strike to the head, see if I can maybe lop that head off. And there it is. So, at this point, it is fully functional, ready to go, and if you touch any of it, you will get electrocuted. Hopefully I don't electrocute myself, so now let's see what happens when we hit a zombie with it. Three, two, Holy crap, that is a really, really difficult weapon to wield. And obviously, it had so much power that the head fell out of the base because of all of that weight before it was able to cut completely through. Not only that, but the, the blades themselves are really thick. And there's another piece of metal. Even still, just letting it drop, which is essentially what I did, did all of that. That's definitely a kill. So we're gonna strap this back on there and try it again. Hopefully, as I do this more and more, I get more comfortable with the weapon. Three, two. Alright, so what we have here is basically what happened last time. The blade goes in and then it gets stopped by this piece of metal which is actually our ground. Which is necessary because otherwise it's not going to arc and it's not going to be an electric axe. It would just be a regular axe. However, it's causing it to get stopped right there. I didn't put a lot of power into this strike. I just basically let the weight of the weapon do the work. So maybe if I put a little bit more power into it, I can get a little more past this area. We'll try that next. But in the meantime, let's see how much damage that actually did. All right. So yeah, through the flesh 
and through the skull and into the cranial cavity, that zombie is definitely dead, even with me just letting the weapon drop. So would I pick this weapon during the zombie apocalypse? Probably not, but is it cool as hell? Hell yes it is. Now I'm gonna try that same strike again, a little bit more power, then I'll try a decap, and after that we're gonna let Charles go crazy with the fire sword. Three, two, one. Now it's time for a decapitation. Three, two. Alright, so as you can see, that strike cut deep into the flesh, into the spine, through the spinal cord. So that zombie's on the ground, probably not dead on this particular strike, but it definitely did quite a bit of damage. So what we're finding is that we're getting similar results in real life as we got with the sledge saw, another dead rising weapon that we tested before. They are awesome in the video games. They are really creative, imaginative, and in the game they are just awesome to get, awesome to use, and you're just killing zombies left and right. But, in reality, they are just heavy, they're unwieldy, and the things that make them really awesome, like for instance the electric aspect of this axe, actually makes it less able to kill zombies. So, real life versus video games, completely different thing. Number seven. The sledge saw. A cross between a sledgehammer and cement saw. The cleverly named sledge saw combines the brute force and blunt trauma with razor sharp stopping power. The handle of the hammer also extends the weapon's reach, so you'll be able to keep zombies at arm's length. This 50 pounds of carnage is wielded by the executioner for maximum destruction, and our targets are two ZGB Ivan heads ready for some punishment. Time to make this zombie go boom, dead rising style.
number six. Oh. Ah, my ears are ringing. Oh. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Ah, my ears are ringing. Oh. Oh my goodness. There's the brain. Wow. That worked yeah. very effectively. Next thing I have to do, I'll wake up the neighborhood, man. Make a hole for yeah. <laughs> that is insane. Look at that. Hole all the way through. Just the entry. Wait, wait. Let me see. It went in. <laughs> and then that's where it came out. It busted the skull. Yeah. How did people shoot that thing? I feel like a badass. Number five. We have a friend. His name is Gear. And he created this weapon based on Watch Dogs 2. It's called the Thunderball. It's made out of an eight ball and some paracord. It's really badass. But now we need an expert to actually wield this weapon and be able to hopefully destroy this zombie. And as far as rope darts and all of those kinds of weapons there's no one better that i've ever met than the executioner himself charles fultz me yeah oh wow are you guys ready they're always ready yeah now since this is a bludgeoning weapon it may not actually break or crack the skull for us to actually be able to see whether or not ivan is dead and yet ivan could still have enough brain damage to be dead so what we're going to be using are these shock watch stickers. This one's rated for 50 G's. According to Mythbusters, if this one turns red on a strike, you're dead. And this one's rated for 100 G's. According to Mythbusters, if that one turns red on a body strike, you're dead. So basically, this is a kill and this will be an overkill. We're going to be putting both of them on this side of the head. So these shock watch stickers don't really like to stick to our Ivan head. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting the sensor out of both of these and obviously we'll still be able to know that this one's red and this one's green and we're going to be cutting a slit into Ivan and then just sticking the sensors inside of his head there we go boom boom a bionic Ivan that's insane right above the temple. I got some blood. You do? Already we can see that there's a little bit of internal hemorrhaging, which means that the skull is fractured, definitely. Probably not a big crack, but definitely a fracture. Now let's take out the stickers and see what we got going on here. 
and it's triggered just a tiny bit. You see that little bit of red right there? Not a definite kill, but a possible kill. You want to try it again? Definitely. Let's do it. All right, so same strike. I'm going to do it a little bit harder this time and hope it doesn't come back and hit me in the face. Or nuts. <laughs> I'm going to be holding my nuts. <laughs> That looked like, oh, we got blood. Yeah, that was beautiful. Dude. That was really beautiful. I saw it go into the skull. Yeah, look at that. It hit here and oh wow, cracked all of that downward. That is for sure. A kill just based on the external damage and internal damage that we can see on this head. But let's see what happened with that sticker right here. 100G sticker is exactly the same. Completely. Completely blown out. Yeah. So two shots with this, regardless of whether or not the cranium explodes and the zombie will be dead. All right, so one strong, well-placed hit was enough to break into the cranial cavity. Now, I'm interested to find out if Charles going crazy will pop off that 100G sticker in explosive fashion. Well, that sticker might not even have a chance to pop off because this thunderball is going to destroy what's left of that skull. Hey, Charles. Hey, Chuck. Knock, knock. Who is there? Share. Share who? Share this video. Wow! Yeah, it, it punched him out this hole right here. Yep, it came out of this hole. So it punched in the skull and the skull bits had nowhere else to go but out. So obviously you can see a lot of blood, but check out all the hemorrhaging. So that is a lot of damage for this neat little weapon. I didn't think it was going to do that much damage. Look at, look, pulling out. Oh my god. <laughs> that is crazy. Oh, more in my hair. Damn it. It's all over me, man. All right, so it took a few hits, but we finally popped that 100G sticker. This weapon is actually kind of like an overkill contender. Congratulations, Gear. You did a good job. She's, she's, she's glad to see your face. What? So not only do I have blood all over me, including my hair, which is gonna be my new hair gel, as you can see, is so perfect, but the blood also got on my walls all the way up there. So. Obviously, spatter's not good. If it gets all over your, your friends, you know, if the pathogen is in the blood, it could infect you or your friends. But the good thing about this weapon is, by this point, you wouldn't be hitting that zombie because that zombie's long dead. We're just doing it because it's fun. All right, so now what have we learned? Well, we learned that when you put an expertly made weapon in an expert's hands, you can do a lot of freaking damage and a little... Meteor hammered like this one can actually be good enough to kill a zombie even if it's just made out of paracord and an eight ball. Number four. Now it's time for that fire sword. All right, Executioner Fultz, what is your plan of attack? Well, I'm going to come in with slightly 
uh, less than 45 degree angle strike to the top of the head and just see what happens. I have no idea what to expect except for a lot of blood and a lot of fire. A lot of fire and hopefully a facial decap. Three, two, one. These weapons are incredibly hard to wield. We have a lot of practice wielding weapons of all sorts, but when you go up toward the 20, 30 pound range, control is what? It's almost impossible. It's, <laughs> it's so, so hard. So the first one hit here and what the hell? Melting. He's spilling goo. He's spilling goo, which is really gross and that's never happened before. Even though it was basically a miss, it's still a kill. Second hit, top of the head, went through the parietal bone. We see blood. So it went into the cranial cavity as well. Also a kill. Unwieldy, yes, but does it do damage, enough damage to kill a zombie? Also, yes. Again, the biggest problem with both of these weapons is just the fact that they are so, so huge. If you were a video game character, you would have no problem uh, being able to wield these weapons. But as a real human person, it's really, really hard. And I am a real human person. All right, now that I know a little bit more what to expect with this thing, I'm gonna try it again, but I'm gonna give it a little bit more power. Three, two. All right, finally after three strikes, we got through this skull. A good amount of damage too. That is definitely dead. That's insane. Lots of blood on the blade. Lots of blood all over me, all over my leg here. And of course, all over the ground around us. A very messy weapon, a very heavy weapon. It's hard to wield. The first two strikes, I just used gravity basically to just come straight down because I didn't know what the weapon was gonna do. So I had to actually step back here and step into it and throw the weapon into it. And, and it took a lot of force, but it definitely got the job done. Number three. Squall's Gunblade from Final Fantasy VIII. It's made by our friends at Man at Arms out of Kromali Steel and features working, moving parts and all the belts and whistles you remember from this fantastic game. This impressive battle ready replica is ready to make a zombie go boom. Let's do this.
Number two. Zombie go boom starts right now. They're about to destroy an Ivan head with a tank round and it's going to be a lot of fun. We know it's going to overkill the Ivan, but we want to see how spectacular it's going to be. I I'm pretty freaking excited. Are you excited? I'm always excited. Are you ready? I'm always ready. Let's do this. All right, so we're here with Paul Dolly, the owner of this fine machine right here. So Paul, what can you tell us about this tank? This is a custom-built replica of a German Stug III, which is uh, short for Sturmgeschutz, which is built on a British 432 chassis. Got a 75 millimeter gun. It's sub-chambered down to 50 cal, so that uh, we can take it any place and uh, do anything we want to with it without having to worry about crossing state lines. These were Germany's number one tank killer by the end of the war. Beginning of the war, they were designed to support infantry assaults and uh, by the end of the war, they had turned into Germ one of Germany's number one tank killers. All right, so are you ready to kill a zombie? Hey, you know, <laughs> we've had to deal with Russian zombies, and uh, <laughs> so we're kind of excited to see what happens to this guy. Right on. All right, let's see what happens when we run an Ivan head over with this tank. By the way, if you're wondering, before we crush this Ivan head, this tank weighs a little over 21 tons, which is around 42,000 pounds. Okay, so the skull is completely crushed in. I mean, this zombie is hella dead. Uh, there's blood absolutely everywhere, just this pool of blood. There's no way any person or zombie would be able to survive that. Wow. Uh, let's yeah. see. It smashed it into the ground. Yeah, it's like... Oh, wow. It's just smashed. Smashed. Oh, my God. Well, I wow. guess uh, there's only one thing left for us to do, and that would be to shoot it. Are you ready? I'm always ready. Of course he is. Yes, yeah! Got him! That's what you get. Look at that vantage point. Look at that vantage point. He couldn't see me at all. Hey, what's up guys? What are you doing? I'm sitting here in a tank, playing World of Tanks. I like tanks so much. I decided to play World of Tanks while in a tank. Do you like tanks that much or a little bit less? Well, check out World of Tanks because it's super fun. If you just so happen to not have a tank, this is the next best thing. And it's free to play. Hey Charles, what are you doing? I'm playing this sweet World of Tanks game on your computer, bro. Well, I don't mean to sound like a jerk, but shouldn't you be playing that on your own device? <laughs> I don't have a sweet computer like you. It doesn't matter, you have a phone, right? Yeah. You can play it on your phone. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Can my cousin play it too? He doesn't have a phone or a computer. Well, does he have an Xbox One? Yeah. Yeah, then he can. Whoa! Really? Yeah. Okay, uh, what about my mom? She has a PS4. Yeah. So, you, she can play it. This is available on virtually all devices. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How much does it cost? Oh, it's free to play. Are you serious? That's the best part. Is there any benefit to me downloading it right now? Well, if you use Zombie Go Boom's link in the description below, you can get a ton of bonus stuff and a free tank. A free tank? That's right. In the description below? That's right. I'm going right now. <laughs> all right. All right, let's load this thing up. All right. Three, two. I've never seen that on Zombie Go Boom before. It atomized the blood. Wow, that was loud. A long, I would say, I don't know, about 20 yards, something like that. It, when I saw it, that's all I saw. All I saw, saw was a skull cap. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty wild. That's and look awesome. at that. That's Isn't that crazy? Insane. insane. Do you see this? 
one shot and basically <laughs> the entire skull cap just shot away it's gone this zombie is uh, as dead as you can get <laughs> <laughs> he's still smiling though, so that's okay wow <laughs> number one the fierce DD sword one half made out of gorgeous Damascus steel, the other half made out of W2 high carbon tool steel, and the whole laughing thing made out of pure badassness. If you thought a fantasy sword would never have what it takes to be functional, you probably underestimated the Zelda team and our friends at Man at Arms. Could the hero of time make a zombie's clock run out? You bet your ass. ZGB Top 10. Please support Zombie Go Boom by subscribing to this channel and sharing and liking this video.